The Elliptus Astartes chapter, known as the Reclamation, is a Primaris exclusive chapter created during the Ultima founding to act as a crusading, vanguard force and fleet-based chapter to pave the way in the recovery of the lost worlds of the Imperium and bring them back to compliance and under Imperial rule. They are sons of Rogal Dawn, created from his gene seed and that of the Seventh Legion, the Imperial Fists. The Reclamation is a chapter founded on the very core ideals to stride towards that made Legionus Astartes, the very origins of the Space Marines, a force to take the galaxy for the Emperor, the Imperium and humanity. They find themselves in a galaxy ripped in half and bleeding out, with mankind divided and besieged by all sides. The chapter will scream their war cry with terror and hatred, Drive your blades deep, as they must be that very crafted blade, forged and artificed by the Mechanicus and guided by the hand of the Emperor, to deliver death to the Xenus, the mutant and the heretic. The chapter icon represents that very drive, featuring a sword piercing through a skull and wings of the Angels of Death, a simple but effective icon and badge that is worn proudly. Although they are on the same gene seed as the Imperial Fists, the Reclamation has taken closer to their brothers of the Black Templars, showing the same zealous ferocity and loyalty by never resisting in their duties to fuel the fires of the Eternal Crusade. The chapter's structure was initially Codex compliant, but over time the chapter began to deviate in minor ways to better increase and adapt to the many battlefields both in structure and war gear. Over the numerous planets and battlefields, fighting in every theatre of war possible and constantly on the front lines ever driving deeper in their goal of reclaiming mankind's birthright to rule the galaxy, the chapter's number were strained in every mission and battle they committed to and their war gear weathered and battered by the tides of war. The battle line Astartes found themselves tested and proven, and from this unique specialist Astartes squads were formed, indoctrinate and standardized across the battle companies. As a result of the creation of additional squad formations, chapters numbers slowly began to increase in size to accommodate for the battle company to increase in roles, totaling, but not limited to, anywhere between 120 to 150 battle brothers per battle company. One example of this is the Intercessor Stalker Squad. While most Codex compliant chapters will find their intercessors using their bolt rifles in all three configurations when needed, the Reclamation's Astartes will find themselves training and perfecting their marksman skills, as standard with the Stalker, Auto and regular bolt rifle configurations However, a select few squads will master and dedicate themselves to one type. The Intercessor Stalkers are dedicated to the Stalker Bolt Rifle and form perfect sniper fire support, synergizing with that of the Eliminator squads. The Stalkers are also outfitted with unique retrofitted war gear to increase the effectiveness of this dedicated squad, including a Mark VII helmet variation to include enhanced optics and communication suit. The chapter believes that across every planet they reclaim, the secrets, relics and technologies found are all the more tools needed to fuel the fire of eternal war for themselves or the Imperium as a whole. Because of this, the chapter and Adeptus Mechanicus maintain strong ties in return for allowing modifications and retrofits to their war gear, they prioritize the strategic values of lost industrial worlds and forge worlds, second being lost chapter worlds, allowing the reclamation to be reinforced and rearmed, even going as far as to use war gear of the lost and fallen chapter worlds as a symbolic act to continue the fight in the name of the Emperor. Retrofication is commonplace amongst the Reclamation chapter. Being fleet-based and acting as a spearhead, the Astartes, although where the common Mark X variants, Tacticus, Phobos and Gravis, they have begun to adorn pieces of old patterns of armor types for both symbolic and in some cases practical reasons. Most Astartes will be equipped with the Mark II or III style shoulder pads and helmet variations, with the practical being a heavy and more durable armor piece and symbolic of their ideals to be closer to Legionus Astartes and the Great Crusade. Other notable power armor marks, such as the Mark V, VI and VII shoulder pads and helmets variations, are also as easily interchangeable with the Mark X Tacticus and Phobos variants. 
Due to the chapter's tendency to feel the need to recover and reuse any and all weapons of war, the reclamation has also acquired a number of unique Astartes issued equipment, pieces of relic war gear and some unusual artifacts that would find a few inquisitive eye turned towards them. One such relic, found and wielded by the current chief librarian, Vigilanata, is a four staff with a long, arching, kopesh styled weapon that showed a perfect mirror reflection when gazed upon its blade. Uncovered on a reimagined fortress planet from the warp, now lived in a state of disrepair upon its founding beneath the abandon of what was once a space marine stronghold of unknown origins, the chief librarian felt a familiarity as he was drawn closer to the vault beneath. As he unlocked the secrets within, and when he gazed upon the blade, he saw more than just his reflection. He was reminded of the very war cry Astartes proudly call out into the battle. Only one name felt appropriate for such a weapon, Monumentum. Ever since, it served as the catalyst for all Astartes of the reclamation to be reminded that they are the blades of war. Their chapter master, Verinor Raxilius, proven in countless battles as a masterful tactician and specialist in all fields of orbital and planetary assaults, siege, reckon and infiltration, he rose his way through the chapter, earning his right to lead the rites of reclamation and forever sharpening the chapter's cutting edge. From his very induction, he showed a desire for leadership, quickly started serving as a sergeant of the vanguard squads, later becoming a lieutenant and then captain. He experienced firsthand the chapter's very limits upon the many theatres of war. Werner was the first to start specialising the squads within his battle company in hopes of completely maximising their capabilities in exceeding the mission parameters. This was soon noticed by the chapter master at the time, and quickly all the captains began to adopt this more stricter formation of their battle line forces, and soon after the aforementioned deviations from Codex Compliant began to show. Verenor cemented the new formations and increased ranks of the chapter, once arising to the rank of chapter master at the request of Marcellus after the Battle of Carnor IV. The now former chapter master now transformed into a venerated redempted Rednaught after he was barely recovered by Verenor and his intercessors. The battle took place on a lost industrial world known as Carnor IV. Insanity fell across the planet as it was pulled into the warp tear known as the Cicatrix Maledictum. It re-emerged in the crusading path of the reclamation, serving alongside a lance of House Tyrannis and Skitari cohorts, and with their oath in an effort to continue the relationship held with the Mechanicus, Carnor IV became a priority target, and the rites of reclamation commenced. Despite being lost and believed that nothing but ruin and decay would be found, it came as a shock to the command staff of the flagship, the World of Domination, that signs of life and activity were coming from the planet. Across its major hive industrial cities, black thick smog continued to belch out as Furnace for War brought its production for the sinister ambitions of a rogue warband of heretic Astartes calling themselves the Severed Serpent. Its once imperial populace now slaves to the machines, its proud guardsmen, regiment and PDF a twisted mockery of spikes and scares who were forced to slaughter each other until only the strongest and proven were allowed to live and serve under their masters, clad in midnight blue and sickly tint of green. As the loyalists made a full-scale planetary invasion in an effort to swiftly dominate and destroy all resistance of the planet, knowing they easily outmatched their foe, Marcellus led the charge and quickly stepped up and devised a plan that would soon see the master of the Severed Serpent have his head severed. Once the heretics were located with the efforts of the Vanguard Company, the plan was simple – to surround and ensnare, cutting off escape and allowing the chapter master to move in for the kill. Resistance was nothing short of pitiful, as the chapter pushed through the traitor lines of cultists and armsmen, posing no threat at all to the mighty ceramite clad Astartes. The chapter master personally charged forward, pushed through with his honor guard, to face the master of a severed serpent when the traitors revealed their trap. The area surrounding was cut off as hordes of raving madmen unleashed from under the streets like a wall of flesh and following behind were the more disciplined servants of traitor god and heretic Astartes, quickly forming a perimeter to close off the chapter master and prevent any reinforcements from entering. Verena, riding with his personal repulsor, the buried lance, and his squad were on approach towards the central manufactorium where the target was holding out when the streets began to run rampant with the crazed populace now turned to nothing but insane meat shields. 
The repulsor fired on all sides, its punisher ripping apart dozens every second. Bolt rounds and missiles launched out from all sides, creating a gap allowing the intercessors to disembark and form a disciplined bolter drill fire lines, slowly clearing the tide. Soon after, they were greeted with a hail of last volley fire. The greeting, though, would be returned with bolter and blade, as Verena would not relent. With no response from the chapter master of the Vox, Verena assumed he was trapped in a duel against the heretic leader and that an opening had to be made to clear the chapter master out once he had eliminated his target. A call for close air support came over the Vox as he became botched down in last bolt of fire of the traitors, pinning them in the ruins. Hunkered down and caught in what felt like a stalemate, Verena could not allow to fail and get caught here so close to his chapter master and victory. Not now, not ever. He had to be the sharpened blade that would not dull or fail. He had to bring his might and will to the traitors. He had to be a legion in his own right, and without hesitation or fear, he pulled his blade and bolt pistol, looked to his brothers, and commanded them to drive your blades deep. With the same hatred and ferocity was felt across every marine, and in seconds they stood up and brought a legion's wrath of bolter fire, advancing every step into the oncoming fire. A missile fired caused one marine to fall heavily wounded, and another stunned. Their brothers quickly formed to defend them, as the others moved left and right, advancing with their captain. The buried lance moved up, providing fire support from above the position, and over the Vox, Verano ordered all available units to form to his position and follow through to break the lines. Soon after, the Stormhawks quickly flew over, assault cannons hot and missiles armed, and an Imperial Knight soon followed behind, breaking the rubble. Every traitor would be delivered no mercy, killing all in his wake. Charging forward, he arrived to the target location to find the honor guard of both loyal and traitor dead, and his chapter master cut down and impaled to the ground, bleeding, and a wounded Chaos Lord standing over him, ready to sever his head. Catching him off guard, Verona leapt and forced his blade into the warlord's side, knocking him to the ground, and with sheer unnatural brutality and savagery, began to cut, stab, and rip apart the Chaos Lord completely into pieces and deserved traitor's death. The battle for Karnoa IV would soon be over once the traitor forces became leaderless and disorganized and were soon fleeing or cut down. Marcellus would later be interred into a dreadnought and as a last act before being interred to rest, gave Verena the rights of reclamation and rank of chapter master, knowing he would lead the chapter with unending fury. Now, Chapter Master Verena Raxilius would continue to fight like wrath of a legion strength. He was once tested to the near point of failure in a stalemate against a race he had never before fought. The Reclamation Space Marine chapter would face off against the Tau Empire and a distant mineral-rich world by the name of Arius III. Strike teams and intercessors would be found clashing rounds in gun lines, reavers and breaches teams battled in close quarters, incursors and pathfinders on board impulsors and devilfish would constantly outmaneuver and counter each other in recon and infiltration, crisis teams and interceptors leapt and saw from battle-ridden skies and ground, the crushing grav plates of the repulsors maneuvering against its agile equal of the hammerhead gunship as their powerful guns were brought to bear on each other. The chapter in its entirety was brought to a standstill, and a pain was felt in every brother, like a swing of a sword, every blow and strike was parried and countered. Verinor personally stood with his chapter in what would be the final battle. He would have to enact the same fury shown by him and his intercessors in Karnor IV in what was forever known by the chapter as Fury of a Legion, found in every battle brother. There was one thing the Astartes had over the Xenus. If it wasn't their strength, firepower or tactics, it was that they knew no fear and would force the Tau to their knees at breaking point even if the entire chapter had to compromise themselves. They would not be bested and defeated by Xenus. A blade is no use when forever sheathed, mocking the fallen fireblade, breaking the symbolic blade in half and crushing him to death under his foot. The battle was won, and with unacceptable tolerances by the reclamation standards, after performing such a feat, chapter-wide losses were found to be a near 30%.
Verona would oversee the chapter rebuild quickly and promote all outstanding members to continue forming specialized and veteran squads in the process. The fury of a legion was a desperate but calculated risk that would only ever be called upon when the situation was dire. But when called, the chapter would answer, no matter the cost. The Reclamation continued to fight for humanity's very birthright and uphold the Emperor's Great Crusade. This is the purpose of the Astartes, the life of an angel of death, created to serve as a weapon of mankind's will and only end their duty in death. With war gear of old and new, the stalwart stubbornness of the Imperial Fist and zealous unrelenting force of the Black Templars coursing through their veins, and the heart and mind of what made the Legionists Astartes at their core, the Reclamation will have this galaxy for the Emperor, the Imperium and humanity.